بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين It's been a very wonderful journey being with you in this series journey that is unforgettable a journey that is unforgettable journey to the world of jinn to conclude, insha'Allah, I want to leave you with very important points that will allow you to be jinn-free, not being touched by idnillah by them, and to be able to protect yourself. However, keep in mind, being touched by jinn is like illness, like sickness. A person who is healthy, working out, eating right, may get sick periodically. Likewise, a person who is doing all the necessary adhka, doing the righteous deed, reading the Qur'an, fasting, volunteer fasting, praying voluntary prayers, may still be affected by jinn. And this is what Allah decreed for that individual, so he has to be patient with. From the things you have to understand is how persistent the shaitan is in general we pray salat al-fajr and we do maybe quran here and give a sadaqah in secret and then we feel so bit and so important and so righteous self-righteousness is comes to our heart what we don't realize is the shayateen and their followers they don't give up they don't give up even in our sleep as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, at night before you go to bed, shaitan comes to you and he says, ahead of you, very long night. And he ties three nuts on your neck. And each one, he places there and he pins there and he says to you, you have a very long night, relax. And his idea here is to make sure that you miss Salat al-Fajr, the congregation and not praying with the congregation. Now, how can we protect ourselves from this? First thing is to have sincerity. What is sincerity? We always heard the word, you have to be sincere. You have to be sincere in action. What is sincerity? Abdullah ibn Mubarak said, to leave an act of worship for people that is show off, that is ri'ah and to perform an act of worship for the people that is shirk, that is associating someone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the true sincerity, he said, is for Allah to save you from the first one and from the second one, from both of them. So when we say you have to have sincerity, I mean you have to do whatever you're doing for the sake of Allah and for the love of Allah and for no one else but to please your Creator. To please your Creator. And when you read what happened between Shaytan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Shaytan he promised to mislead us, that I will mislead them all. And he said, Wala uzayinanna lahum, and I will adorn, I will beautify this land. For them. And then he said, Except your chosen slaves. Now, here, when you do act of worship through sincerity, then you become among the selected few of the slaves of Allah. And we know every amal, every action needs two important very important element for Allah to accept the action and one is to have that sincerity second is to do it exactly the way the messenger of Allah did it now imagine if someone comes to you and says, we have to do this act and the messenger of Allah messenger of Allah never did it would that did be acceptable he would answer is no because Rasulullah never did it so therefore we would not know how to do it the four of Khulafa Rashid never did it, therefore we will not know how to do. So first is sincerity. 
Second is dua, is to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask Allah to protect you from the shayateen. And when you become righteous enough through your sincerity, through the dua, and through other acts of worship, shaytan may even avoid you and run away from you and stay away from you. And one thing that the Messenger of Allah said that can change the qadr is dua. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated in Mustadrak al-Hakim, other thing that you can do is to make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from the evil of the shayateen. And dua, my dear brothers and sisters, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Always keep calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him from His bounty, asking of what He has subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the methodology and the way of the righteous people, such as the prophets and the messengers of Allah, the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the worst people are those who are deprived from making dua. So subhanallah, if we want to change, if we are struggling with our lives or struggling with illnesses like such illnesses and positions of shayateen, all we need to do is dua. This is what we encourage everyone to do because if you do that, then be idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is an area a lot of people they don't really capitalize on it. It won't cost you anything. It won't take much effort from you. All you need to do is establish that relationship between yourself and your Creator through a dua. And of course, as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, worst the type of people are those who are deprived from making dua, and they only make dua at the time of hardship and difficulties. This is one of the main an important element that a Muslim should always remember and always try to do as much as he can. But there's also other protections at the time that we can protect ourselves, in especially in a very vulnerable environment. And that will be given to you, inshallah, as soon as we come back from the break. Assalamu alaikum. See you soon. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and welcome back. And inshallah, we will go over other points that is important. The idni subhanahu wa ta'ala. So pay attention to this because it's where a lot of people don't put it, uh, make a, a lot of people, is where a lot of people overlook. The other area, or the other time, that you need a protection is when you're using the bathroom. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was very keen for Muslims to say the dua. Because he knew who's going to be there, the shayateen wal iyadu billah, and they can possess you from going to the bathroom if you don't do your dua. Other times, and hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes very clear when he said, A'udhu bika, oh Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khabai. The other time is during the salah. See, brothers and sisters, salah is a battlefield between shaytan and us. And as Uthman bin Aas radiyallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, every time I pray, I get distracted, distracted from shaitan. So the messenger of Allah said, well, this is from a shaitan called khunzu. So when you start your salah, if you either ahsasta, for either ahsasta, if you feel that it was whispering to you and was telling you things, say, A'udhu billahi bin shaitani rajim turn a little bit to the left and say, A'udhu Billah, turn a little bit to the left, blow air three times, and then continue with your Salah. Then continue with your Salah. Now, when you continue with the Salah, the Shaytan will leave you. But what if he comes back? You continue doing the same thing until you finish your Salah, and make sure that you don't lose the ajr of your Salah to a Shaytan. Also, the things that will protect you from Shaytan, is reciting ayat al-kursi. See this ayah, which is the heart of the Quran, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
he, while he was sitting with the Sahaba, he said to one of the Sahaba, Ubay ibn Ka'b, he said, Ya Ubay, what is the most powerful ayah in the Quran? And Ubay said, Ayat al Kursi or the Messenger of Allah. So Rasulullah, he tapped, he hit the chest of Abu ibn al Ka'b, and he said, May Allah reward and give you more knowledge, and may your chest enjoy the vivid knowledge that you have. Very unique story of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu. Abu Huraira said, I was appointed to watch, to safeguard the sadaqah of the Muslims, to guard the sadaqah of the Muslims. I saw a man stealing from the sadaqah, so I captured him, and the man said, I'm a poor man, please, don't do anything to say, no, I'm gonna take you to the messenger of Allah. He said, please, don't. So, I let him go because I felt sorry for him. He has children and so on. The Messenger of Allah in the morning said, What did your friend do? What did your companion do? He said, Ya Rasulullah, he complained about being poor and having children, so I let him go. The Messenger of Allah said, He lied to you and he will come back. Tomorrow night he came back, stealing from the sadaqah. Abu Huraira captured him. He pleaded with Abu Huraira with the same excuse, I have children, I'm a poor man, let me go. I'll take you to the Messenger of Allah. He said, No, I will never come back. So Abu Huraira, with his gentleness, he let him go for the second night. The Messenger of Allah said, what did your companion do, Ya Abu Huraira? He said, Ya Rasulullah, he has children and wife, I let him go. He said, he lied to you, and he's coming back for the third time. He came back for the third time, and Abu Huraira this time said, no, I would not leave you. You lied to me two nights in a row, I'm taking you to the Messenger of Allah. That man said to Abu Huraira, I will teach you one ayah, that if you recite it, you will be protected from shaitan. Abu Huraira was a student of knowledge. He was very eager to learn, very hungry for ilm. So he said, yes, teach me. I want to know. So he said, ayat al-kursi. So he let him go. In the morning, Rasulullah said, what did your companion do? Yeah, Abu Huraira. He said, Ya Rasulullah, he told me an ayah, and he said, this ayah will protect you from shaitan if you recite it every night before you go to bed. Rasulullah said, Sadaqaka wa huwa kathub. He is a liar, but he told you the truth this time. Do you know who you were talking to all these three past nights? He said, no. They said, you were talking to shaitan. You were talking to shaitan. Rabbi Huraira was talking to shaitan physically. He saw a shaitan in a human shape and he was talking to him. But shaitan does not come to us all the time in a human shape. But he also comes to us and comes to, into our thoughts. In Sahih al-Bukhari, a Muslim, the messenger of Allah said, a shaitan will come to you and he will say, who created you? Very tricky question. And you say, Allah. And so who created this beautiful universe? The trees, animals, plants, other humans. And you keep saying, Allah, Allah, until the shaitan will say to you, and who created Allah? He said, when that thought comes to your mind and a similar thought, he said, stop, desist from that, and say, Amantu billahi wa rasul. Say, Udu billah, and say, I believe in Allah and his messenger. See, subhanallah, even Islam is teaching us how to protect our thought from shaitan. Since we cannot see him, we were giving weapons to fight him. Dhikr, remembrance of Allah. Even when he whispers to us, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, well, say, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very crucial for everyone to memorize Ayat al-Kursi. Children as young as two years, three years, if they can read, they should memorize Ayat al-Kursi because when they recite, Allah will appoint that angel to protect them. And you make sure your children memorize that ayah. You make sure that everyone in the household memorize the ayah, at least from the book of Allah, from Surah Al-Baqarah. In this, we also learn from the Messenger of Allah and from the ulama how to protect ourselves in a way that we don't really appreciate daily in our daily lives. And this is like 
one of the things that we need to do is be with the jama'ah. Always be with someone. Don't be alone. If you're traveling, don't travel by yourself. Because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you travel by yourself, shaitan is near you. When you travel with two, shaitan is still, you know, the reason to get to you and divert you from the path of Allah. But when you are three, shaitan does not come close to you. You should not sleep alone. You should not be living by yourself. You have to live with Muslims. You have to live with people. Because when the jama'ah, shaitan stays away. But the most important jama'ah congregation is the congregation of the salah al jamaah Salat al-Fajr, you go and pray in the mosque. Don't pray at home. Only women pray at home. Men, they go out and they be part of the community and they get to know their Muslim brothers and they ask about their condition. You're in need, we give. You're sick, we visit. You're away, we take care of your family. And so on. In that congregation, then the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you. Also, what you need to do is for you to be protected from shaitan and to be away from all the, the, the ways that the shaitan may lead you to is to avoid being in the places of haram. If, you're, if there's a wedding and they're playing music and they're singing and the men and women are together, some of them dancing together, this is a place of ma'asa. This is where the shaitan really harvests his opportunities. Stay away from that and be away from all of the disobedient acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, try not to get angry. Anger is what shaitan loves. When you're angry, then shaitan comes to you and he increases that get upset, you know, more. And he ignites that anger until you become out of control. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting and two of the companions were verbally saying things to one another, harsh statements. And one of them got very upset. And he turned red and he can see the veins in his, from his neck and the messenger of Allah said, if he says, well, I know one thing, if he, can, if he says it, that would leave him. I, if the man says, A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim Oh Allah, protect me from the shaytan. A'udhu billah. Then the shaytan will leave you and he will calm down. When you're angry, this is when the shaytan will also push you to the limit. And what is he, how does he start this? He started this by creating argument. Simple argument that argument escalate, go to the anger, anger, maybe fist fight or physical fight, and then everybody is out of control. And that's when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, and he said, I guarantee you a house in Jannah if you leave argument knowing that you're right. Imagine Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will guarantee you a palace in paradise if you leave argument knowing that you're right. So as a Muslim, we always try to avoid the arguments, try to stay away from it, and try to focus that what would unite the hearts of a believers, because otherwise shaitan will utilize. In this, brothers and sisters, what you also need to do is constantly, constantly be in the company of righteous. Because that righteousness itself will protect you from the shaitan. And when you with the company of righteous, then they will remember Allah. And when they remember Allah, the angels of Allah will come. And when the angels of Allah come, then the shayateen will flee and run away from the scene. So you want to be the angels of the righteous. Because that will save you from falling into the traps of shaitan, whether possession or leading you in a different direction. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, in this series, I would say 
the most important thing and the most powerful thing that will protect you is to strengthen your relationship with Allah. And how do you do this? There is no blueprint. Some of us can be closer to Allah by giving sadaqah. Others, they may be closer to Allah by fasting. Others may be closer to Allah by performing qiyam al layl Others may be closer to Allah doing dhikr in their house, alone, not in congregation. Others may be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing simple deeds, like cleaning the masjid, washing, the, cleaning the bathroom, washing the floor, because I will humble you down and then you become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do these things and you are close to Allah, then Allah will love you. And when Allah loves you, then Allah will make you his wali. And when you become the wali of Allah, then Allah will protect you. And anyone who tries to harm you will be the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you became the wali, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man aada li wali, whoever becomes an enemy to my wali, he said, I will become the enemy to that individual. So be a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you can be protected and be shield from all the shayateen and from the fitting of the shayateen and from the traps of shayateen for my end this was a very beautiful journey and inshallah i hope this was also informative to you and for your family and also be idnillah you i hope you will benefit and apply the points that we've mentioned and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for listening wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh